Back. You're watching Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. It's a uh, very special day because there's all kinds of criminal things happening here. Yesterday, the uh, kickoff of the Weinstein trial. Uh, New York is very fortunate because we have uh, also uh, famed alleged criminal Michael Avenatti just around the corner at the Metropolitan Detention Center. And the Weinstein trial is all the rage. It started yesterday, opening arguments on the front page of both New York papers here. Nobody knows that courthouse and what happens in there better than this guy. Our next guest, Jeffrey Lickman, joins us, famed criminal defense attorney, political analyst. Jeff, thanks for joining us again, Thank as you usual. Guys, appreciate it. So, uh, you know, this sluggo is in there, and uh, it seems like all uh, hell's broke loose, that uh, there's already, you know, talk of his defense team looking for a mistrial. Well, I mean, they've been trying every single day. The case is, uh, since it's been indicted, basically, for a mistrial, it's not going to work, obviously. This judge is hell-bent on going forward, even when there's actually real mistrial issues uh, that uh, came about, which the main one was the juror who lied under oath about writing a book about predatory uh, older men. She said it was just a book about uh, parents and their children, yet on her own website it uh, describes the book that she's writing about predatory older men in New York City with younger women women, which is exactly what the Weinstein case is about. Clearly, just the fact that she's writing a book should have gotten rid of her uh, uh, for cause on its own, but then lying under oath um, uh, in front of the court, not only perhaps should she have uh, been kicked off the case, but she should have possibly even been criminally charged. This judge wants her on. I can tell you this, that is a guarantee there's going to be one juror that is not going to vote to acquit. So is this, in your view, is that a real mistrial event right there? You know, a juror who lied? Well, it's now, is it an appellate issue um, if there's, God forbid, a conviction for Harvey? Yes, I would say that it's probably a very strong issue. I don't know that they're going to get stronger. That's a really, really good issue. But you have to hope that the appellate courts are going to be fair. Sometimes in high-profile cases, they tend to put their you know, thumbs on the scale, so to speak. And uh, that's what I, I suppose uh, any defense lawyer So you, is you've about. represented some of the most world-renowned criminals, including El Chapo. Um, when you start the first day and you get something like this, you put that in the bank as, all right, we have one chip here for, for appeal. You know, I, I don't think that way. When I'm no. on trial... I just want to burn it all down. I want to burn the courthouse down. I want to win every possible issue. If I lose, I want to go down, you know, fighting to the death. I want to destroy every witness, and I want to destroy the prosecutors. If at the end of the day we have a bunch of issues that are potentially good for appeal, that's great. But when I'm on trial, I'm, as the, as the trial lawyer, I'm focused solely on winning that trial. There are people that are with me on my team that are concerned about the appellate issues. Those are more of the law guys. Let those guys deal with making the record during the trial. I don't want to be distracted. I want to tear the witnesses apart. Jeffrey, uh, let me ask you about this issue the defense raised yesterday, and that's this photo of Bill Clinton that the prosecutor put up uh, before the jury. Uh, they're saying that uh, because of uh, Bill Clinton's history as a sexual predator himself, that uh, because this could unfairly prejudice the jury. The prosecution is saying that because uh, Bill Clinton and his relationship with Harvey Weinstein was so integral to how he would exercise control over these women, that it is relevant. Um, is this uh, something that could actually lead to a mistrial? Or if not, in this stage of the game, could it be an appellate issue that helps get thrown out? No, th this is a, a really, really weak issue. I mean, everybody loves Bill Clinton in New York City. Um, the fact that he is alleged. If anything, been, I would think it, it would it would it, prejudice the, the folks the other of, way. Of course, I don't yeah. know about that. You know, the the defense I mean? is grasping. They're looking for anything. There are better things here for a win in the case. I mean, not the Bill Clinton issue. You've got uh, victims here, uh, so-called victims, that in any other rape case there would never even have been an indictment. It's just absolutely impossible. You've got victims who have said um, and they have proof of it that Harvey was her casual boyfriend, uh, wanted to introduce Harvey to her mother, loves Harvey, uh, brags about having sex with Harvey, uh, goes back to a hotel room after she supposedly got raped, and then goes back again alone months later and claims that she got raped again. Nobody goes to the police immediately, nobody goes to the, the press, um, and then continue to have contact with them. It's just not what rape victims do. Now, I understand, Frank, that the uh, expert that's going to testify for the prosecution is going to say, well, you don't understand. This is how rape victims act sometimes. They do counterintuitive things. And this is what I would say. 
what possibly could uh, you say to an expert for the prosecutor that would convince her or him that these witnesses are actually lying. Well, you know, they married Harvey and had 17 kids with him. No, well, that, that's what rape victims do sometimes. Well, they testified under oath uh, with the penalty of perjury and going, you know, sometimes they lie uh, because that's what rape victims do. There's almost nothing that a rape victim, an alleged rape victim, could do uh, that would be seen by the prosecutors as uh, not credible. And what I would say is this. Like, I don't know what happened uh, in those rooms all those times. I'm talking as a defense lawyer, not talking about what actually happened. What I'm talking about is guilt or innocence. I'm talking about beyond the reasonable ad a doubt proof. And it just, it's not even close in this case. This case, frankly, is a layup for the defense. They should win. So easily. let me, let me ask you this, just maybe a little conspiratorial, but um, there's been a lot in the news lately of Bill Clinton uh, being friends with Jeffrey Epstein, the other Steen, right? Um, who's, I guess, known to be an alleged pedophile, and he was convicted of, you convicted, know, I convicted. Think, yeah. um, do you think maybe they're drawing that picture for the jury to say, you know, Clinton's friends with one one raper, um, he's friends with another one here, they're trying to lump them together, the Epstein-Weinstein story? I don't think so. I think that people in New York, for whatever reason, are just madly in love with Bill Clinton. Uh, there are, are worse pictures they could have shown the jury. And as Frank brought out before, the evidence does show that Harvey Weinstein is talking to his victims, so to speak, uh, potentially trying to groom them. And one of the ways he's allegedly doing it is by claiming that he's got a close relationship with the Clintons. So if you talk about the Clintons and the testimony comes out, is anybody really saying that a picture of Bill Clinton is going to push it over the top into unfair? So, so no. Jeffrey, you have one of the purported victims here um, that could send Harvey to jail for the rest of his life uh, who is bragging about having a sexual relationship with him. Emails that will be included and shown to the jury uh, saying that uh, she loves Harvey and not once ever went to the police. Now. Um, what about the other victims that we may hear from here? People like Annabella Sciorra and the other people that aren't charged but are going to be admitted into this case. Doesn't that cumulatively all paint a pretty damning picture of Harvey? I think so. That's the, the so-called Molyneux evidence, and they're not actually charged as victims, uh, but they're other prior bad acts that the jury is allowed to consider that perhaps if he did a similar thing back then to what he's charged with here, that you could use that evidence. I don't know that anybody's convicting on the Molyneux alone. Again, uh, Annabella Sciorra, did she run to the police? Did she run to the press? Now, I understand why she didn't. She gave a credible reason why she didn't. But, you know, those are not the women that are charged. And there's inconsistency people don't remember when the incidents took place. Look, I would like to think, and again, I, I don't know, I'm not a woman, I've, I've never been raped, with all respect, sorry Frank, uh, but I would think that if you were getting violently raped, you would remember the day when it happened. It would be burned into your heart, it would be tattooed into your memory. It's not what happened here, the women are all over the place. And here's the thing, I've had maybe 200 sexual assault cases in Manhattan over the last 30 years. I get a bunch every single year. I can tell you this, if this guy's name was not Harvey Weinstein and he was a regular guy and all of this impeachment material existed, they never would have charged him. This would have been such a quick... And it thrown been, out. It, not even thrown out. It never even would have gotten to a grand jury. And that's why initially when these allegations were brought to the Manhattan DA's office, they didn't bring a case. They only brought it when the Me Too movement overwhelmed everybody and Cy Vance got afraid well, of it for his own sake. My last question here, Jeff, before we go to break. So let's say this does end in a conviction. Doesn't this send a message to every prosecutor in the country that all you have to do is find someone who's willing to accuse a high-profile person? Doesn't mean if there's any evidence at all. I mean, this is going to enable prosecutors all over the country to go over any everybody who's even a, a modicum of a celebrity. I think there's not even a question that's what's happening. Remember, Bill Cosby, there was a hung jury in the first case. He got convicted in the second trial only when they brought in that prior bad act evidence in and overwhelmed the jury with it. But yeah, I think that people are just terrified of having uh, the press and uh, the society just destroying them because of the Me Too movement, the people are sort of duck in covering and hoping it doesn't happen to them. That's why you see that there's almost nobody that's willing to speak publicly for Harvey. Look, I barely know Harvey. I've had a couple of conversations with him. Um, I've met him one time when he uh, possibly was going to hire me for this case. Uh, but I can tell you, it's not right that, that uh, defense lawyers are not coming out. Nobody wants to be named. They're terrified of the fact that if they simply stand up for the Constitution, just because it relates to Harvey Weinstein, that their lives are going to be over. 
that's not what we do for a living, and it's not right. If you're accused of a crime, you want people, especially your lawyer, to stand up strong for you no matter what. All right. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, Jeff is a, uh, a big, big, big opponent of Iran. We're going to come back and talk about Iran's uh, most recent promise to uh, for no, more, no new nukes. Um, and we're also going to talk about this s- slimy little rat, Michael Avenatti, um, who's right around the corner in the Metropolitan Detention Center. I want to take a quick break, come back at you right after this. <laughs> 